Hey y'all! In this video we're going to discuss a topic and I'm going to demonstrate a form that has been sorely neglected by too many people, me included, for too long. And that is the Material Setup form in the Toolpaths tab. The Material Setup form is not to be confused with Job Setup over here in the Drawing tab. Material Setup comes in after we have the design drawn. Now, this design comes to me from a subscriber who needed a little bit of help with his 3D model placement. And he has graciously allowed me to use his file for this demonstration. Now, as it is his file and his model, I do not own them, so I cannot make this available to you. My apologies. Where the problem comes in is over here in the Toolpaths tab. Now, he has already calculated his toolpaths. He's got everything all set and ready to go. And I'm going to preview these toolpaths to show you the issue that he's having. This file is unmodified. I have not made any changes to it at all. The first thing I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to change the material color to something that has a little bit less grain figure in it so that you can see the issue a little bit more clearly. What he's doing is he's doing his roughing and finishing toolpaths first, which is what I would do as well. And then he carves a pocket down into the surface of the material, V carves some text, cuts a bevel around the outside perimeter, then finally does his cutout. Well, let's go ahead and preview the 3D roughing, finishing, pocket clearance, and the final pocket perimeter to show you what the issue is. So we'll put a check mark in these boxes here and we'll preview these visible toolpaths. Okay, with our preview complete, we can come over here to the 3D model and we can see his issue. Now, he has applied a color to each of these toolpaths to make them easier to keep track of. And that actually helps us to see what the issue is. We can see a little bit of a hole over here, and that's our first clue to the problem. Now, if I rock the model back, we can see what the problem actually is. And that is this ridge here. The pocket was cut deeper than the model was cut. And it looks like this model here has been cut separately and then glued down onto the piece. And what he wants is he wants this model to blend in with the surface of this pocket. Now if we put our cursor up here and we look down here at the readouts that pop up when I have my cursor up here, we can see that the depth of this is at about negative 0.2907 inches. That's where the surface, the modeling plane of this model is sitting. But if we look over here at the depth of this pocket, the pocket is being cut to 0.4136 inches. So much, much deeper. And he wants that deep pocket to get this reveal over here, which is a nice touch. So the question comes in. How can we place this model further down so that this model surface right here is the same as this surface out here in the pocket? And that's where our 
material setup form comes into play. Let me come over here to another session of Aspire that has the exact same file open, and I'll demonstrate how we can fix this issue. We'll go ahead over to the toolpaths. Now, you have undoubtedly seen in several videos from many, many sources, including mine, where we come straight over to the toolpath tab, we start selecting vectors and calculating toolpaths. Now, this is something that I have not reinforced much, and I need to pay closer attention to this. Especially true when we're dealing with a 3D model is we need to come up over here to Material Setup and come into this form before we calculate any toolpaths. And that's just to double check on a few things. So we'll get into Material Setup by clicking the Set button right here. And that opens our Material Setup form. This is where we can double check and confirm a few things about our setup. The material thickness is three quarters of an inch. My XY datum is down in the bottom left corner. On those occasions where I use the center to lay out my pattern or my design, this is where I come over and I change my XY datum to the bottom left corner. Then I'll come down here and double check that my Z0 is at the material surface. Then we come down here to the model position in the material. This is where we can fix this area. Now we see right here that the modeling plane in Z is sitting at 0 0.2907. Well, if we come back over to the other session of Aspire, we can confirm that right here, looking at my readouts down below. 0.2907. What we'll need to do is we want to change that modeling plane's position. We want it out here to be the same level as this pocket. We can do this two ways. We can either change our pocket depth or we can change that model position in the material. He wants this nice deep reveal, so he wants to keep that pocket depth that's where we'll have to change that modeling plane. So, let me get, pull up my calculator here that's built into Windows. And I'll take the depth of this pocket, which is 0.4136. Then I'm going to subtract the modeling plane height from that. So in this case, it would be minus 0 0.2907, and I get 0.1229. Now, the Vectric software likes to round up. So let's go ahead and let's round this up to 0 0.123. And as we can see, by the size of this model and by the size of this project, that's a little more than one-eighth of an inch. That's quite a step there. So what I'll want to do is I'll want to adjust that model plane's position down to the bottom of this pocket. So I'll take the point one, two, three, come back over into my other session of Aspire here, and I'm going to put a gap above the model of point one two three. Now if we look our slider moved down and I now have this gap up here. What that has done is that's put that modeling plane Z down to the same as the pocket depth. Now we are one ten thousandths of an inch difference in this model, this is not going to matter. Again, the software is going to round up. So, we've got that gap above the model set 
we'll come down here and we'll click OK. And we automatically get the prompt that the material setup values have changed. All toolpaths must be recalculated to ensure correct results. Would you like to recalculate now? Yes. So the software is going to go through and recalculate all of the toolpaths to reflect that model's change. We'll click OK. Now I'll deselect all of my toolpaths and we'll come back and we'll do the same here. We'll click, we'll select the model and the pockets. We'll go into our preview window. Then we will preview the visible toolpaths. Okay, with our preview complete, let's go up here, and I should have changed this before I started the carving. But now we can take a look over here and we can see that our height is roughly the same. Again, we have a little bit of a discrepancy right there, four digits to the right of the decimal. And you can see these striped areas here where the color kind of fades out. That's to show you that it has carved through the modeling plane to the surface of the material here. So let me go ahead and we'll select this and we'll turn off any color fill by selecting no fill. And we can take a look at our model and we see now that we no longer have these islands. We no longer have that platform that this model appeared to be sitting on top of. It's blended in nicely with this pocket and no longer looks like an afterthought. It's simply getting into the material setup that helps to locate the model, place it within the material, to equal whatever you happen to be doing out here around the other side. If this was not going to be placed into a pocket, this wouldn't be necessary. In fact, most of the 3D models I carve, I carve with no gap above the model. But in certain situations where a model is going to be placed down into a pocket or down into a dish, there may be a gap above the model that's necessary. So, if you're getting a result similar to this, where you have what appears to be a large step, and your model looks more like an applique than something that was carved into the base of the material, by taking the depth of your pocket then finding the lowest point of that model. And if you hover your cursor over here, it will tell you, if you look, the second line from the bottom shows the maximum depth of that car, 0.2907 inches. You can take this surface, subtract this surface, this depth, the max depth right there in that bubble, from the depth of this surface, and that will tell you how much of a gap above the model to apply. Now, a little bit of caution needs to be used here because when you do your 3D roughing toolpath, that means this model starts, in this case, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch down from the surface of the actual material. So make sure that your 3D roughing tool path is calculated in such a way that it's safe for the tool that you're going to use to do the 3D roughing. Personally, I use a quarter inch end mill. That's just one caveat there. Make sure that your tool and your machine can handle the 3D roughing toolpath that's going to result from pushing that model further down into the material. What you're looking for here 
is to get your modeling plane Z set to the same depth as the depth of this pocket that the model is going to be sitting in. So that's the solution to that issue. While we're here in the material setup form, this is another topic that I have neglected to reinforce. And that is these two boxes down here. The home start position and the rapid Z gaps above the material. Let's talk about the home and start position first. When we're talking about the home position, start position, we're talking about this project, this set of tool paths that we're going to calculate. We are not talking about homing your CNC router. We're talking about the home position for this project. The home start position is the position where the bit is going to begin from. In this case, we're talking about the X0, Y0, which is the bottom left corner of this project. That means that no matter where the bit is placed above the material, when you do a tool change, for example, when you start to carve any of these tool paths, the bit is going to return to X0, Y0 with a Z gap above the material, in my case, of 0.8. So no matter where I do my bit change, if the bit happens to be above the material over here, 3 inches, when I hit cycle start in Mach 3, that bit is going to lower itself down to 0.8 as it travels back over here to X0, Y0. Then it's going to move over and begin carving. This is the home start position for this project only. I have never changed my home start position. This is where I start every toolpath on every project. I have never touched that and I probably never will. But that's what this box is. That's the home start position. Rapid Z gaps above material. Some of you may have heard the term safe Z. This is where you set safe Z. What this means is when your bit is out here cutting in an area, and needs to retract up out of the material to move over to another area, plunge in and start carving, it needs to know how far to lift up above the surface of the material before it can move, do a rapid move over to the next cutting location. This is safe Z. We have two factors here. We have clearance, and plunge, Z1 and Z2. Clearance is that safe Z setting. When the machine, for example, finishes roughing out this model, it needs to retract to be able to re return to the home position. With this setting, the bit will retract until it's point two inches above the surface of the material, not the area it's carved, the surface of the material. Once it reaches point two, it will start moving over to the home position. This is one of the more critical measurements. Everybody has different ways of mounting material to their machine beds. And Sometimes there may be multiple ways material is mounted. If you have a material that's three quarters of an inch thick that you're mounting using clamps and you're cutting anywhere near one of those clamps, you will need to set your Z1 clearance here so that that bit lifts up out of the material high enough to clear those clamps should the bit travel over one. This is where you make that setting. So if I 
am using a clamp that's a quarter of an inch thick, I will take this point two and I will add a quarter inch to it. In my case, that would be 0.45. That means any time this bit lifts up, to come out of the material and move to another area, no matter where that is, it's going to lift up 0.45 of an inch before it makes that move in X or Y. This is where you set that measurement, your safe Z. That is Z1. What Z2 is, is that is the rapid plunge rate you have your machine set for. And every machine is different. For instance, on my CNC, since the Z is so short, I have my rapid rate set at 120 inches per minute. The Z is very short, and it may never get up to that speed. But that's the speed I have set in there meaning that when it starts to plunge down, it will move at that rapid rate up to 120 inches a minute until it gets to my Z2 level, which is 0.2 of an inch above the material. When it reaches 0.2 of an inch above that material, it slows down to whatever plunge rate I have set for the bit that I'm using for a particular car. So if I have a plunge rate of, let's say, 30 inches per minute, when I first hit cycle start to start carving, it will move down at 120 inches per minute until it gets 0.2 above my material. Then it'll slow down to that plunge rate of 30 inches per minute and plunge into material to start carving. That's what Z1 and Z2 are. Those are the safe Z settings. How much clearance above the surface of the material it needs to hit before it starts moving in X and Y to go to the next position, and where in distance above the material it needs to slow down to the plunge rate of the bit being used to cut the project. So I hope that isn't too confusing. Other than that, the form more or less explains itself. The material Z0, the XY datum, and the thickness are usually set up over in job setup when you first begin the modeling process. But if any changes are made, to the current project, you can make those changes here and it will affect these tool paths. And again, when I lay out a project, I usually have my XY datum set to the center. When I get that layout complete, I will come over and set that XY datum to the bottom left corner. So, I hope I didn't confuse everybody with these explanations. So, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. As a reminder, today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss anything I've covered in this video or your VCARVE and Aspire questions in general. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. These live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel while you're here. And when you click that subscribe button, click that little notification bell right next to it. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So, I hope to see you this afternoon for today's live Q&A session. And as always, 
whether you subscribe to my channel or not. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.